My name's Adam and I'm part of the marketing team at StreamGo and today we're going to be answering all your questions on virtual events. So let's get started. So there are loads of key benefits for delivering a virtual event for your organisation. Number one, help yourself stand out from a crowd. How many video conferences have you been on over the past few months? If it's anything like me, a lot more than before this all happened. Get your virtual event to really stand out by being creative about how you deliver it, being creative about the content, being creative about what sort of sessions you deliver and who delivers them. Delivering the, all of that in a, in a beautiful virtual event setting is going to help you blast your competitors out the water. And the other key point I'd like to focus on is you can deliver it for a lot less than an in-person conference if you're smart. Your F&B budget doesn't exist. Your travel budget doesn't exist. You don't have to hire rooms, hotels. You can be really smart about it and, and get it way under budget for the year. Let's not forget reach. You're limited for a physical event. You can only have as many people as the fire regulations allow you to have in a room. On a virtual event, a good platform has no limit. So in itself, you can invite way more people to your virtual event than you can a physical. And you know, the statistics that we've seen, more people are converting from registration to attendance, and more people are attending than our clients are expecting to. So data capture on virtual events, it goes way beyond what you can capture in a physical event. You know, you've got sponsor stands at a physical event. They're only going to really capture the data of the people who are willing to stop by and, and leave their information. With a virtual event, all of the information that is captured at the point of registration then carries on through the user journey, every behavior, every engagement point, it's tracked, it's covered in extensive reporting. So what stands did they visit? How many videos did they watch? How long did they watch for? What did they click? What did they download? What questions did they ask? What polls did they answer? The list goes on. But the point I'm trying to make is the user journey is tracked from the minute that they land on that registration page all the way through to when they leave and then if they come back and watch things on demand. Let's not forget about making it easy for the user to leave their data with you. Make sure it's captured in the right way. Make sure all the checkboxes are in where they're supposed to be at the right time at the registration. And finally, make it really easy for your user. Think about call to action buttons that are just single clicks. Once they've been through the registration gate, you don't need to make them fill out forms again. One click call to action buttons, book a meeting. I'm interested to hear more. Make it easy. So sponsor lead generation, always a big thing that I always get asked about. Um, one of the main things that we can do is replicate those exhibition stands that you see at physical events and bring them online. There's a, there's a few key things that you'll see from an online sponsor booth or an exhibition stand. Um, and those three things tend to be, you've got the chat, so you can talk directly to your sponsor. You can have conversations online, um, you've got video content. So the sponsor can provide us um, some videos. So, you know, it could be a clip about their product or services, um, and it just kind of like showcases what they do and, 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 and what, what the brand's all about. Uh, one of the third things is they've got resources to download as well. So the media packs that they would often hand out at a physical event, those can be made available to download. So when people do land on the booth, they can say, okay, yeah, that's the media pack I wanted to, I wanted to grab from the sponsor. Um, some of the cool things that we can do, we could add a call to action to actually book a meeting later on. So if the sponsor is prepared to open up their diary, you might want to book a meeting with that person the following day, the following week, you know, at your own convenience. Um, but then data is always going to be the key thing. So the data that we'll get from that page, everyone that's landing on that page, that sponsor will get access to that data. So if they have 100 people that land on their page during the event, there's 100 email addresses to go market to. If you had like 10, 15 clicks on that call to action to book a meeting, then we've got some really warm leads come from that, uh, from that booth. Yeah, so when it comes to ticketing for a virtual event, um, it's always something that I'll kind of ask the client first about, you know, if you were to charge a ticket for a physical event because of the content, would it be an exclusive, then 
I believe that you probably should be charging for tickets for your virtual events as well. Um, the content is going to re remain the same, so you shouldn't be devaluing uh, a ticket for your online event. Um, if you feel like giving a discount is going to be appropriate, um, maybe it's because the online event isn't going to be as big, there's not going to be as many sessions, then again, that's something to consider. Um, what some of my clients will always think about as well is if you're going to do a series of events, it's possibly thinking about offering the first one free of charge. Um, and it's just because if they've never delivered a virtual event before, they just want to make sure that they've got the audience there. Uh, they want to make sure that when the audience come to their event and they see their virtual event, that it's just as good as if it had been a live event uh, and a physical event. So from there, for events two and three, then they know that they can begin to charge again because you say, okay, we've delivered it uh, once and it was great. Um, you've now got our trust in how credible that the virtual event is, that it's going to deliver the same content uh, as your physical events. And, and then kind of pricing can be, uh, can be talked about from there. But yeah, it, it does depend on the client. It depends on the sector, the industry, the content that's going out. Um, I mean, if you're delivering an internal commerce event, I probably wouldn't expect that you have to pay for a ticket. Um, but it's, yeah, it's really a decision that you guys need to think about, um, but that would, be, that would be my piece of advice. So what do you charge your sponsors and exhibitors for your virtual event? Um, how long is a piece of string, really? This is, this is such a, an open question, and I can give you some advice on this, but again, it's never going to be a one-size-fits-all. Um, consider what you would be charging at your physical events. Um, you know, if you were to offer a stand uh, at a physical event, you know, they, they are very expensive because you know that you're going to bring that sponsor the leads that they want. Um, think about how many attendees that you're actually going to be predicting that you'll get. Um, if it's going to be a huge event, you know, you're getting 10,000 attendees on the day, then that's clearly a massive opportunity for your sponsors and you should be charging for that as well. Uh, likewise, if the industry that you're in uh, or the product or services that you have is quite niche and you're thinking you're going to be getting maybe 100 to 200 attendees at your event, then again, think about how many how many warm leads each sponsor is going to get from that and think about what the average order value is of, of that product or that service that they have um, and from there you can kind of start to, to piece together um, a, a reasonable price um, there's never going to be one price for all sponsors i think you're always going to get a scale um, so think about how you how you tier your sponsorship um, do you offer a platinum sponsorship to um, to a, a, a sponsor that would essentially get the data, it's all going to be down to data, isn't it? Um, so how much data do they get, how many leads do they get? If a platinum sponsor were to pay X amount, uh, they might get the registration data, so everybody that's registered for the event. Um, if you wanted to look at um, maybe a gold or a silver level sponsor, these sponsors might get a, an exhibition booth, um, they might get a, a speaking slot as well, so they'll get data from their speaking slot, they'll get data from their exhibition booth. Um, if it was a bronze sponsor, maybe they just get their logo on the site that clicks through to their website, but they don't get a booth, uh, they don't get any real data, but they're getting, they're getting traffic directly to their site. Um, so think about how you can tier that, um, but again, there's, kind of, there's never going to be a one-size-fits-all. Measuring the return on investment for a virtual event it's not too dissimilar to that of a physical event. You know, you're going to have the same goals. You know, why are you why are you running it in the first place? Are you running it because you want to increase website traffic? Are you running it because you want to nurture or create new leads? Are you generating traffic and excitement for your sponsors? Is it about brand exposure? How do you measure all of those things just generally? Um, the same KPIs can be aligned with your virtual event. But the benefit or you know one of the the key benefits of your virtual event is the data is really extensive to back those kpis up so make sure you know what your expectations are and if you don't know them because you've never run a virtual event before look into the market there's loads of statistics out there and we can help you too ask the questions understand where your expectations should be set how warm is your database how expectant are they of a virtual event how technically savvy are they is your virtual event set up really well? You know, make sure it can run and deliver on these goals. Make sure you've got that robust technology behind you to deliver an ex excellent event, and therefore your goals should be delivered.